Hello, this is Michael Savona from Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Thank you for joining me to hear about myofibrosis as a lethal disease. Most patients with myofibrosis do die of the disease, but there's some confusion over the causes of their death, and for good reasons, because there are many causes of death in primary myofibrosis. About a third of the patients transform to acute leukemia. About a fifth of the patients progress to more advanced disease without transforming to acute leukemia, and about one-fifth to a third of the patients have thrombotic or cardiovascular or bleeding complications. We know that myelofibrosis is a progressive disease. Though some patients are often diagnosed in a later phase, in the more proliferative early phases of disease, we tend to see a spectrum of thrombotic manifestations. These thrombotic manifestations may occur in the form of arterial thromboses, venous thromboses, or microcirculatory disturbances, which account for the unique symptomology in proliferative MF, polycythemia vera, and sometimes, but less commonly, in essential thrombocythemia. These include erythromelasia, puritis, migraine headaches. The ECLAP trial was conducted 10 to 15 years ago. This trial compared low-dose aspirin to placebo for patients with polycythemia vera. The hypothesis was that low-dose aspirin, though it might include an increased risk of bleeding, would reduce risks of clots by reducing vasomotor symptomology and by inhibiting platelet function. With a combined endpoint of non-fatal myocardial infarction, non-fatal stroke, pulmonary embolism, major venous thrombosis, or death from cardiovascular diseases, aspirin was superior to placebo. Incidentally, the incidence of major bleeding episodes was not significantly increased in the aspirin group. These data form the backbone for why aspirin is used in proliferative phase myelofibrosis and polycythemia vera. Comfort 1 study compared ruxolitinib, the JAK1-2 inhibitor, versus placebo, and there was a survival advantage reached despite the crossover design of the study. We know the inhibition of the jak stab pathway reduces cytokines, which are elevated in patients with myelofibrosis. This occurs independently of whether patients have the V617F mutation or not. What is seen here are heat maps showing upregulation, noted in red, or decreases, noted in green. And on the right, patients, regardless of their V617F status, were treated with ruxolitinib with reduction in inflammatory cytokines. It is presumed that the reduced risk of clotting, reduced risk of spleen-related symptoms, and general reduction of catabolic processes in myofibrosis are improved with JAKSTAT inhibition. It's not clear whether or not JAKSTAT signaling perturbation can lead to reduction in transformation to acute leukemia. In a retrospective analysis, a few years ago, investigators found the transformation of AML is independent on age, increased platelets, high bone marrow blast count, poor cytogenetics, RBC transfusion dependence, worsening performance status, or a previous history of hydroxyurea. Each of these risk factors in a univariate analysis proved to increase the risk of transformation of AML. Clearly, the worst risks are established in patients with bone marrow blast greater than 10% and the worst carrier type. In summary, patients with myofibrosis succumb to many different causes. Largely, this includes transformation of leukemia, thrombosis, or progression of MF without transformation. We know that many of the early deaths are largely due to thrombotic complications, and for this reason, it's important to make sure that unless contraindicated, patients do receive low-dose aspirin. Recent efforts to reduce inflammatory signal and myofibrosis with JAK-STAT regulation is clearly a source of survival benefit with respect to spleen reduction and symptom management. While the transformation of acute leukemia was the same in both the placebo and the treatment arms in the COMFORT-1 studies, abrogation of the risk of transformation of acute leukemia with JAK-STAT inhibition may yet be part of a strategy to avoid transformation. Thank you for listening.